This tiny little 1080p projector is from XJimmy. It is called their Mogo 2 Pro. And it's a smart 1080p projector because it's got a couple of features in there others don't have. And that is uninterrupted auto keystone and auto focus correction. And it's very quick indeed. So imagine if someone accidentally knocks the projector or you decide to set it up in another room, you place it down on a table and it will only take a few seconds to correct the image, get it spot on, and it does work really well, at least in my testing of this unit. Another smart feature, it does have an eye protection mode. So imagine you do have uh, young children, they walk in front of this DLP laser projector. The last thing you want is them to damage their eyes to look straight into it, but it will detect that because it's got sensors on board and then display a much duller image to stop them from damaging or hurting their eyes there. Now it does have two built-in speakers. They are eight watts each, and a bit of a spoiler here for the size of this projector, they are pretty impressive. It runs Android TV 11, and it does have a maximum brightness of 400 ISO lumens. Included with the Mogo 2 Pro, you will find our user manual. We've got two AAA batteries, so great to see that I've included them. Our Android TV remote, and our power supply. Now you'd note that the power supply does have a Type-C port. Now the good thing about having the Type-C port is it means that you can use these, which is a power bank that I've got right here. Now this one outputs 65 watts, so you need 65 watts or over, and using power delivery, it's gonna be able to power it. So it's a very handy option to have. It means it's quite a portable little unit then. And look at the size of it, it's tiny. I really do like how small it really is. Now we've got our USB port here for external file storage. If you want to play any media files off that, you can do so. HDMI right here and our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now you can see here, we've got this little uh, diaphragm. So this is to do with the bass, a bass reflex diaphragm, diaphragm here that you will see move when the speakers are on. So it's got two speakers inside it that are eight watts, pretty powerful. I'll give you a sample of them later on in this video. So this is our exit vent here. It is fan cooled, of course, like all projectors. So that's gonna be pushing the hot here out of the back of it. And again, there will be a sample of that too as well. The fan noise you can expect out of the Mogo 2 Pro. It has the standard mounting point right here. So you can get a projector stand for it or have it inverted with a ceiling mount setup and a nice large wide rubber foot that goes all the way around the outside of it so it won't slide off the table. Either side we do have this nice mesh that goes around it. So this outer part is metal, the bottom is plastic here, and then up the top we have plastic again with the XGIMI logo there, the branding, and our power on button with status LED. This projector is a DLP projector, so it's a full HD resolution and 400 ISO lumens is the maximum output from it. So it does have 90% color gamut coverage of a DC IP3 and also D65 is the color temperature standard that it does use. Down the bottom here, there is a little camera and that is to do with the auto keystone correction. We've got more sensors up the top with the autofocus. Now they're using what they call their intelligent screen adaption and this is uninterrupted auto keystone correction with it and we have uninterrupted autofocus and intelligent eye protection. So if anyone walks in front of this, there's a sensor there that will disable the projection then to stop, say for example, young children looking right into the projector lens. So I have this projector now set up around about 200 centimeters away from my wall that I'm projecting on and the projected image, well, you are looking at about 100 inches. The Mogo 2 Pro is running Android TV 11, so you've got all your favorite applications. Some of them are pre-installed, like Amazon Prime Video, for example, that is right there. We've got YouTube. There's a lot on here. Now, Netflix was not installed by default. They do give you a guide inside the box on how to get it installed. And what it does involve is getting this application that is called, I'll just show you right here, Desktop Manager. Once you install Desktop Manager, then you're able to, if you, once you give it the permissions, that is, to download here Netflix. Now, I've discovered that Netflix, the APK file that they do use, is a little dated for Android TV devices, and that does result in Netflix only being standard definition, unfortunately. So I hope there's going to be a workaround for this, or XGIMI can, of course, bring us this particular projector with it already pre-installed. Now, the performance in the menus here is very good, no lag whatsoever, and I noticed that, okay, once it first starts up, it loads in all those images at the start here, 
with all that information, but the performance is excellent. It's good. You don't really see any major slowdowns. Now, it's got two gigabytes of RAM, and I believe it's running a quad core with 16 gigabytes of storage. So pretty standard there for Android TV, but it's great that it's all built into it. So I'll just run through some of the specific settings for this projector. Now you find brightness mode. Now it really isn't brightness modes as such. It's more different color modes. We've got vivid, cinema, bright, performance, custom. Now performance is probably trying to just lower the response times for gaming and things like that. Now bright, I haven't really noticed it being any brighter. So I just keep it on vivid which is the default setting and most people will run with that. Now you can put it into the cinema mode too as well. And as I mentioned before, I think I did, it's got a D65 color temperature standard too. So that's like the, the Hollywood standard for color temperature. You can set that up with it too as well. And then the DCI P3 color coverage. Now keystone correction, it's got the automatic keystone correction, which you're currently looking at. It's actually very good. The way it aligned everything, it looks very level to me on the wall, no problems with it. Manual keystone correction, image, zoom displacement and keystone settings. So you can manually go along and change that for yourself. I just tend to keep it on this auto. Now, if it does get bumped, it will automatically do the keystone thing itself. And we've got auto focus on board and you have those settings too as well. So the focus settings, okay, on startup, focus on if it gets knocked or you decide to move it or something, uh, then it will auto focus placement. So if it is going to be ceiling mounted, then you can set this up rear or rear ceiling, and it can auto vertical flip too as well. If you needed that, well, it's good, it's got all that. And under others, you can find a few other things here. So the HDMI control settings, focus calibration, keystone calibration, Bluetooth visibility, auto eye protection, you can disable that if you want, and eco mode. Maybe if you're running off a power bank, you wanna get the maximum amount of time out of it, then you can turn on this eco mode, which is a nice setting to have there. Now I'm in Amazon Prime Video, which yes, does support full HD and it is already pre-installed. So the menu performance is pretty much like the Android TV menus, that it is quick, it's fluid here, and it didn't take long at all to load. Now I'm on the Wi-Fi 5 at the moment here. It does not support Wi-Fi 6, of course. They, they normally don't, they don't, most of them. And you'll find that this performance is very good. So I'm just gonna go ahead into one of these episodes and just quickly load it. Now, for obvious reasons, I can't show you much of this at all, just a few seconds. It's just to check out the performance of it. So a few seconds to cache that in and that performance is looking very good. Loaded in really quick and helped by the fact that yes, I do have one gigabit fiber now up and down, so that's, uh, there's no bottlenecks with, I believe the performance, especially not with my wireless. Now I've just logged into Netflix and you can see the menu here all popped in really quick. That is again, really great to see this performance. Although down there that hasn't loaded in, only on Netflix action, that seems to be a bit slow there caching that. So I'll just go into this again to show you what the performance is like. Jump into an episode here of Vikings. And this should be quite quick, halfway through. All right, that loaded in really fast. Now having a look at YouTube, this is the YouTube app and I'm gonna set it here, even though it doesn't support it, I'll put this on 4K, but it's gonna be scaling the image down, of course, to just full HD to take a look at just briefly how good this projection looks. Now I can see that the quality of YouTube does have a lot of compression. There we go, now it's over in full HD. That is looking absolutely stunning. So great colors, very good sharpness to it. And the blacks, well let's have a look at black levels right here with the background of the YouTube app. And I don't see any annoying noise. What I really like about this projector is it's very quick to set up that autofocus, the auto keystone correction. I'll give you a demo of that shortly, but the focus is, is pretty much perfect here. I don't see any zones, any areas that are out of focus that you do see with some cheaper projectors, about half the price of this one. Like the last one I reviewed, it's very good for its price, but it doesn't have this image quality. This is looking a lot brighter because it's about 50 ANSI lumens brighter, 400 ANSI lumens in total, but it's that sharpness. I'm just seeing the whole area looks to be very sharp, really good focus, spot on. I haven't needed to actually manually correct it at all and very punchy looking colors. I'll just jump into this clip very quickly to show you a few seconds. All right, and we'll take a look at what these kind of bright vivid covers are gonna look like, especially with these birds. 
Oh yeah, wow, that is very good for a DPL projector. Really bright, oh that's a horrible looking bird, that last one, that looks all right. So very good, I think stunning actually for full HD, this style of projector, those colors and the sharpness, I'm really impressed. Now I am watching this image here in a completely dark room. All of the reviews filmed in a dark room, but what happens if you open the blind or you turn on a 100 watt light, which is what I will do now. Now this light is uh, not aimed directly at the screen, but almost, and you can see that, yes, it looks now quite washed out, nowhere near as good, and that's gonna happen with any projector. Ideally, you wanna be in an environment where it is, if possible, pitch black, completely dark. Now, if you've got a tiny bit of ambient light in the room, you can still enjoy it, but it's just not as satisfying as watching it, like right now, in a completely dark room. Now, it has what they call their uninterrupted auto keystone correction, uninterrupted autofocus. So imagine if I accidentally knock the projector, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move it slightly, there we go, just move it out and around a little bit, and watch this. It will fix itself, just like that. Correction complete, press OK for fine tuning. But you know what? I don't need to fine tune this image. It looks very good. So this happens to be uh, one of the best at doing this that I have covered and reviewed so far for these cheaper projectors. I mean, even the more expensive ones, they don't have this kind of auto keystone correction, this uninterrupted style autofocus. It is really good. It's so fast and quick and so far been absolutely flawless just getting that image looking pretty much perfect. And this is a great option because it is so small and if you've got a power bank that can output 65 watts and over, well, then you can run the projector here just off that power bank. Of course, this DLP projector is fan cooled. So this is where the hot air comes out the back of it and it's just slightly warm. I've been using it for a couple of hours now. I'll give you a sample of what that fan noise sounds like now. Now that is a very standard fan noise that's coming through it. It's not that loud, and when you are playing audio through the speakers, you won't really hear it. Now the great thing about it, it's a constant RPM. So it's not a variable RPM. It could suddenly be roaring away, then it's quiet, then it's on, then it's off. No, it's always like this with this same constant fan noise. Now those eight watt speakers, there are two of them in there. And we've got that little bass reflex diaphragm at the back here. I'm gonna test it out now with a sample track. Again, this is gonna be about 90% volume, just so you can get an idea of what this little unit sounds like. But it's impressive for the size of it. It has quite good little built-in speakers. The Mogo 2 Pro is also good for this. A little bit of casual gaming isn't gonna be a problem. Now I've got my PlayStation 5 set to the 1080p resolution. And what about input lag? So when I press left and right and left for casual gaming, the response times here are fine. Like I'm not having any problems. I could happily game like this. Super immersive too at this 100 inches or so that I'm projecting. Now, as soon as I did turn on my PlayStation 5, it detected it automatically and swapped over to the HDMI input as its source. So in the end, I did end up sorting out Netflix. I managed to get it in full HD, trying out different APK files. I cleared the cache and then I seemed to be up and running. It started out in standard definition, but you notice when it swaps over to full HD, which is really good. That's what you want, of course, with a 1080p projector. You don't want to be running in standard definition. So it does have the correct DRM Widevine Level 1 cert, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, and all that will be in full HD. And Android TV 11 is running really well. Now my favorite feature of this is the uninterrupted auto keystone correction and focus. It's absolutely brilliant that you can just be up and running so quick with this particular projector. So as soon as you put it down or you move its location, it then corrects, gets the keystone pretty much absolutely spot on. Often I need to go through the settings and I need to go into the six point or four point correction with keystone and pull it all out and make sure it looks like a, a, a nice rectangle there and it's lined up all straight, but it does it all for you. And the focus with this model here, I've got to give X Jimmy quite a bit of praise for that because it is excellent. The optics in this unit seems to be very good because I don't see 
The edge is slightly blurred, which does happen with some other models around this price range. And even ones that are slightly more expensive, it just seems to be sharp, always all in focus. And again, it's another thing that you do want with a projector such as this. Now it is an affordable uh, Android TV Full HD projector. The price of it is with the current discount around about 550 US dollars at the time of this video, of course. And I think that's not bad considering the competition out there is quite a bit more expensive. You're talking about 800 or around 700 US dollars. Sure, some of them could be a little bit brighter, but you're not really going to notice something like 50 ISO lumens difference um, between them there. And because this has such a good focus, I would rather actually go for this model here. So I am impressed with the size of it, how those 8 watt speakers do sound too, pretty good considering just it's a tiny little unit here. The only thing I could really say that this does fault and it doesn't really kind of need it in my current setup, but it could with some other people, is it doesn't have a little kickstand on the bottom of it, which would have been nice. That way we could have propped it up for certain scenarios. But of course you can run it inverted. It does have that option. You can go through the settings and set that up. It's just a very minor thing. That's really the only fault I have. The fan noise as well is, is pretty good. You hardly really notice it when it's running and especially if you're using those speakers. So that's the full story there of the X Jimmy Mogo 2 Pro. Thank you so much for watching my review.